The 2017 Porsche 911 Carrera S, undoubtedly one of the best overall sports cars in the world, but Porsche has done something very different to this 911 Carrera S that has never been done before. So welcome to this episode of Carbo's Unboxing Reviews, and this is, of course, the all-new 911 Carrera S. Hang on, so what's new about this that you're saying they've never it's done before? It's turbocharged. Yeah, that's the one. That's right. It used to be naturally aspirated, and the Porsche purists are probably not too happy about that. But we also want to thank Mill Valley, uh, Son and Porsche, for letting us come on down and film this car for you today. So why is turbocharging such a big deal for the Carrera S? Why is it such a big deal? Because it's never been done before. Well... That and also because turbocharging was typically done for the turbo uh, 911 turbo, right? I see what you're and saying. And now the entire lineup, with the exception of the GT3 and GT3 RS, are turbocharged, and it's not going to change. That's it, unless that of course, here to stay. well, unless of course there's a hybrid 911 or an all electric 911 in the future, like the Mission E concepts, right? So you kind of see where Hinted Porsche is going, Porsche, right? But, we, know who knows. but uh, we don't know exactly. And uh, Porsche, of course, is keeping absolutely silent. So they, they call this one the 991.2? Correct. The 991 was first launched a few years ago, and it was just, it's just outstanding. And so then, it's like a facelift. Well, this, yeah. It, but, but a it, bit it, more than a facelift. Well, from the outside, it looks like a facelift. The front and rear ends have been updated a little bit. New lights. Right, exactly. New taillights as well. Yeah. There's a little differences to the hood, if you really want to be specific, but... The big change is this. Yes, that is the sound of the new twin turbocharged three liter flat six. Total of 420 horsepower and 368 pound feet of torque. And this car is paired to the seven speed dual clutch, just like the previous 991. And for the uh, just so that you know, that dual clutch costs an extra $3,200. But you'll have to get that for sure. Well, you can get a 7-speed manual, that comes standard, oh, okay. but most people are going for that dual clutch because it's just it's just stupid fast shifts. It's incredible. Yeah, it destroys manuals, but okay, in terms of the enjoyment, the manual might be more fun. But right, right. If you're all about speed and beating someone else off the line. So how can you tell that this is turbocharged? Just, just look at it. How can I tell this is turbocharged? Yeah, there, should there be some, is a way. There should be some vents or something. Be correct, but where? Um, just there. I can there, see where? Behind right. the wheel? Behind the rear wheel in that in that rear bumper there, they, they just have those two vents, and that indicates the turbocharging. Because of course the Porsche 911 is rear engine, the Boxster and Cayman, the 718 Boxster so Cayman rather that's where are mid-engine. Yeah. Right, and there you have them at the very bottom and right there. And something else that's a bit unusual is the exhaust pipes, that's not standard. No, that's the sport exhaust system. And you can tell that they uh, that this car has it because it's of round. those round ones. Yeah, yes. And there's the, people worry about the sound of turbocharged engines, but... You just heard it. It sounds good. But inside the cockpit, I mean. Yes. Normally, you know, the, the sound is a bit, you know, dark with a turbo. So. Well, right. But Porsche, of course, if there's any automaker that's going to make turbo sound good, there's going to be two in my mind. Immediately, it's Ferrari and Porsche. Right. So and as we've that. seen in the 488 GTB, of course, that is turbocharged now. But it still sounds, it sounds awesome. It sounds great. And this 911 Carrera S sounds fantastic, too. But actually... Porsche pumps the sound of that engine back into the cockpit. There you go, yeah. They augment it. Now, it's so you don't again, it's not fake engine sensation. sound, it's the real engine sound. No, it's real engine, but right, it's just right. amplified. Correct. Right, so, you know, it aids the experience of the drive. Exactly. Now, I like this, uh, this particular 911 Career S's color. It's night blue, and look in the sunshine. You can see that, that really nice metallic look. Yeah, at night, it. that might look a bit black. And, or a navy pops, blue, pops but blue in the, in the, in the, the sun. sunlight, it looks, it's gorgeous. It costs an extra $710. That's worth it. Right. That sport exhaust I was mentioning, that is, it costs an extra almost $3,000. Also worth it, I'd say. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What about the wheels? Are they standard wheels? No, these are upgraded wheels as well. Okay. I mean, look, you got to understand with the Porsche Carrera... Everything costs extra. It's no different than any other German car. Have a wee look at the at the engine there. That is Not the, the most you're going to look at at the engine. Welcome <laughs> to the world of a Porsche 911. Wow, it doesn't give you a lot of information. No, like that. There's it's the not much to look at. Water, oil. Yeah. After that, don't touch don't, it. Don't touch. The, yeah. Well, there's nothing to see. You have to go underneath the car. In order to but get for, the, for, to it. for even like an average handyman, he's not going to want to mess around with that. No, you don't go to your average handyman mechanic for a Porsche 911. You have to go to a certified Porsche technician. No, I mean like if you're an owner and you know, you're a bit handy, no, you probably want right. to leave it alone. 
Right, right? Exactly. That's, what, that's what Porsche's telling you with that. Pretty much. Don't open me. One of the other things I just love about the 911, more so than ever, is that it's just an overall fantastic, not just sports car, but a luxury car. I mean, look at this. Yeah, it looks comfortable. I mean, yeah, it's got black leather that, yeah, with a premium package, so you get 18-way adaptive sports seats that cost an extra $3,825. That's probably an option I wouldn't go for. Why not? Adds weight. I don't really need it. I'm happy just to, you know, reach under the chair, grab the bar, move well, the chair look, like if that. if you're really looking to cut weight... And if you have the budget, go for the GT3, GT3 RS. The but I don't look. I'm, no one's going to drive this car if I buy it. It's going to be me, right? So once I set my driving position with a mechanical chair, okay. I don't need to touch it again. Okay. The Porsche dealer will probably tell you something otherwise in terms of resale value. Like, of course you're going to want this because the next owner well, might be different than you. Yeah, I know. I've, I know about Porsche and how much they charge with options. Of you course. Know? You can almost double the price of a box store. I remember reading. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, with actually. options. So I'm sure you can do something similar with the 911. And when we get to pricing here, it's just <laughs> ridiculous. Oh, ah, yes, the classic 911 rear seats. That no one sits in. And you can't even fold them flat because why? The engine is behind them. Right, and yeah, you're very so, close like, to the engine now. Right, as well. right, right. You're not going to. I mean, look, they're good for children. You Adults, it's punishment. It's good for boxes of stuff. That's it. Yeah, shopping. go grocery shopping. Yeah. There is a frunk. Front, we'll see that too. Front and, trunk. Right. And that's okay. I mean, it's... it's Hang on, so that, that's black leather? That's black leather. It looks a little bit blue. Maybe it's just reflecting the Honestly, if I were... The outside. I love this exterior color. I would go for a tan leather. Tan leather, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the black, it, it just it darkens the interior Or cream, too something white. Yeah, right. Mother of light. pearl. But yeah, it gets dirty quickly. It's probably with right, the light precisely, color. Right, precisely, right. But I, I don't know. This is a little too dark for me. Now, the other thing is with... This 911 is that, look at that center console. It's just full of buttons. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, if you love pressing buttons, there you go. But they all have their functions, and there is a bit of a learning curve. But once you do understand it, it, it makes complete logical sense. But I can understanding, I can totally understand how this can be intimidating to somebody who's never been in this before. It's like, what do I do? But it's fun to learn all that stuff. That's part of the fun of getting a new toy, learning oh, how to play with and it. And that's exactly what this is. It, 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 it is a toy. But where the toy, where they have lots of buttons on the uh, center stack you don't have on the steering wheel oh i know look at the steering wheel right. it's button free i exactly. love that so that's that's better you know i'd only, rather have more buttons right. away if you look to the right in, in the center of the steering wheel that button there it is actually a part of the sport chrono package and what does that button do then oh well it is actually it's it's a mode selector dial for okay. this there's a several different driving modes. Oh, Individual, the normal, settings. sport, and right. sport plus modes. So you can quickly go to sport plus. Right, exactly. So when scare you scare the hell out of your, of your right. passenger. So the only button you get on the steering wheel is when you get that sport chrono package like that, you have that dial. Yeah, and you're not using that it's all the right time. It's right there, anyway, yeah. So. No, but it's cool that it's there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And you have your paddle shifters there. Again, seven speed, dual clutch. So I would probably go for the dual clutch in this case. So while you're talking about different settings for performance, what is the performance on this? Oh, zero to 60 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds. That's pretty damn quick. Top speed, 191 miles per hour. The previous Carrera S went to zero to 60 in four seconds and a top speed of 188 miles per hour. So, so you'll, you'll definitely feel the acceleration right, change. Right. Exactly. Top but yet, speed you're never going to get to anyway. And yet the, the previous Carrera S had the 3.8 liter flat six with 400 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. But okay. it was naturally aspirated. So just for people to know, like 3.6 seconds is ridiculously fast. But if they're talking about other supercars, well, it's not as fast as the McLaren. Okay, fair okay, enough, look, which um, is what? Three seconds um, The 650S will go to 60 in three seconds. Same with the Ferrari 4 da GTB. But they're all, it's all much for muchness. That, right. That's so quick. That's a half a second. We're talking about a half a second here. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's not. And this is what the Carrera S ha is. And that's in a drag race. Yeah, you you'll win and you'll you'll right. feel it. But most of the time, you're going to be like, wow, no. that's crazy fast. It is in any of those cars. Right. And of course, what none of those cars truly have, what this 911 Carrera S here has, is all of this premium features here. Well, they've had a lot. They've had like 50 right. years of experience developing well, it. Well, 911 is sort of a different car that they've turned it into. It used to be real, just purest driver's car. I see. So. But now they're like, well, we can make more money when we make it just more a premium. luxury, yeah. exactly. And they make a lot, a lot of money off these. But still, Porsche makes even more money off the Panamera, the Cayenne. That looked like that. That sent a. Uh, storage looks covered in Alcantara. Yes. And nicely, por nice porcelain. 
Porsche embossed nice, yeah. badge on top of it. I like that. It's all those little touches that yeah, just they, that's they, what they makes they it do difference. something. It does. It does make a difference. Absolutely. Oh, there you go. And you see it. Oh, that's, I like that. That is sweet. That is cool. Oh, cigarette lighter there? Wherever you look, you have to have that. You're reminded where you are. But some people don't like these 911 interiors, and I really don't know why. I mean, look, the previous Porsche 911, the 997 generation, yeah, I didn't really like that interior, but just like the exterior, this interior is just a huge step up. Would you reckon a lot of those guys are moving towards the Boxster now? Like the high-end Boxsters, like GT4 and all that? Well... The ones that want like a pure driving experience. People are saying, you know, the Porsche... The, the Boxster 9 uh, GT4 was voted the best sports car in the world last year. Right, you're bringing up a really good point because on paper, ah, yeah, there's that button for the Sport Chrono. Yeah, okay, adjust it there. But look, on paper, because of its mid engine setup, the Boxster and Cayman have the potential to be the better sports car. Driver's car. Exactly, than this. But Porsche so has why... always, they've never quite let them go all the way. And once you think they've gone all the way, like with the new Cayman GT4, they just come out with a new 911, such as this one, that makes you question the whole thing. I was talking to a guy at Spa earlier this summer right. who was there driving his brand new Cayman GT4. I remember, yeah. Right. And he had just taken this Carrera S, the brand new 2017 one, for a test drive. And he and went- was just blown away by how good of a driver's car that was. And he was comparing it right then and there to his new Cayman GT4. So did you and I buy asked it? him straight up. So what did he, what's he going to do? No, he didn't buy it. He's rich. He'll get to it eventually. But I asked him straight up, which one did you like better? And, and he said, look it, I prefer the Carrera S because it's a better everyday car for him as well. And Even though he just bought a GT4? And he just bought a GT4. So he made a mistake. He was like, shit, I should have bought the, port, the 911. A little bit. But he's rich, so he'll just uh, go and buy it anyway. The GT4 was going to hold its value anyway. That's a good investment. Right, that's that's a rare car. That's but only this is, going up in right. value. But this is a little bit more mainstream. This is meant for everyone to be able to drive it daily. Like, for an example, you have some nice touches, that 4.6-inch uh, color display, which actually now incorporates Apple Play. Okay, that's Apple useful. CarPlay, right. Yeah. That's really good for 20, uh, 2016, 2017. That's and it's awesome. Feature. It just turns the screen into you, like your iPhone screen. Right, it's really cool. Very easy to use. Nice. You see all the apps. Oh, uh, yeah, here's your frunk. Yeah, golf clubs are standard in there. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. No. Actually, no. you're not. You got 10 cubic feet of cargo space. Yeah, like, he's having to actually like, <laughs> carefully position his stuff in there. Just about going to get in there. You can stuff the dog in there, maybe. Um, yeah, Depending if you're, on if your you're, if you're cruel to animals, yeah, you yeah. can. No, I like that front end. They did a nice job. I yeah. didn't really like the 991's point uh, zero version front end so much. Yeah. The, the the bottom part, I just thought it was a little, little weak. But this time they got it. Yeah. And I really like it. Again, new headlights, it's got LED road units. You'd be a bit like, oh, if that was in your rear view mirror, right? You'd be like, I better move over for this guy. Got it. I love that color. Yeah, it's a great. Seven hundred and ten bucks, well spent right there. Yeah, that's actually for an option. That's not bad. Right. I'd definitely take that. So are you curious about the competition? Yeah. I, I mean, I've got a fair idea what some of the competition is. Okay. You got the McLaren 570S yep. and the new 570 GT. Okay. That's R- quite a bit more money though, right? Well, hang on, hang grand. on, hang on. You have the Mercedes AMG GT and GTS. That's a bit more like it, right. I think. The Audi R8. Yep. The V8, not the V10. Mm, okay. The Jaguar F-Type R. That's a fair comparison, right. I'd say. And I would even add to this the Acura NSX. Right. The new okay. One. And... Even the Nissan GTR, yet the GTR, especially that's all wheel drive, you can get this in all wheel drive, that is the 4S, but that costs an extra $6,900 to get all wheel drive cars, in this 911. The, the thing is, now these cars, they are all similar in performance. I see why you've taken all those cars and put, right. bundled them together, but in terms of the pricing, there's a big difference well, between talk- 100 and 180 grand. Well, let's talk about that. The base Carrera S. Just the base one here starts at $103,400. Right. And this car, all told with several features and doesn't even have the $8,520 ceramic brake package. Okay. All in, 123985 That's still, if you look at a base 570S, that's 187 and, right. and you add on the, the options, which right, is a fair right, comparison, right. you're looking at two hundred and twenty grand. But once you're over that, you know, the round, hovering the hundred thirty, hundred fifty thousand dollars mark... You got enough money to do whatever you want. Yeah, perhaps. In fact, the Porsche even says the typical 911 buyer spends between $15,000 and $19,000 on options. Yeah, I think that's about so. standard for all these sort of cars. Yeah. So anyway, everyone, thanks for watching. We're out of time today. Any questions, leave them for us in the comments. And we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.